Melanie Davidson and Dr. Wester as well for support and help on this project. The motivation for our project is that there's been an increase in the use of social networks and product promotion. Um, while there is this large increase, there's limited research to show whether this method is effective. And that's a research question of do individuals update consumption decisions based on the peer influence of others in a social group? And we have hypothesized that individuals will update their consumption preferences, and we have hypothesized that this will be a positive trend, that uh, consumers will increase the price that they're willing to pay if someone in their peer group recommends a product. For our study, we had three food items. We have oysters, mushrooms, and chocolate fun too. Chocolate, or the um, values that they were sold for were on the left. Uh, two oysters, one pound of mushrooms, and 3.5 ounces of chocolate fondue. On the right-hand side of the screen, there's our treatment table. On the first column, we have a label treatment, either no label or a locally produced label. If a locally produced label was enacted in the entire study, then we see two oysters locally produced, or one pound of locally produced mushrooms being shown throughout the study. If no label, then it was simply just two oysters or one pound of mushrooms. For the information treatment, there's three treatments and a control. The control obviously saw no um, information. The peer willingness to pay, people who received this treatment would see their peers willingness to pay for the three food items. For frequency, the peers would see each other's how frequently they're consuming the food items. And the final columns would see both the willingness to pay and how frequently these consumers saw or eat the other food items. Participants sat in groups of four and they did the survey on the podcast. This was the general guideline of the study. First, they did a baseline willingness to pay, where they saw how frequently they ate the food items and how much they'd be willing to pay the maximum amount out of zero to ten dollars. Then they would go to a network assessment where they would assess and answer questions about how well they knew their peers in their group. Again, they're sitting in groups of four, so they may know their other people in their group real well, but they may not know them at all. We want all levels of connectivity in our groups. And then there's a third information treatment. So this is where one of those information treatments I spoke about before was randomly implemented. So they either see their peers willingness to pay, how much they would um, frequently consume the food items, or both willing to pay and frequency, frequently consume, or they receive the control treatment or just on none of this information. After receiving the information treatment, they did a post-treatment willingness to pay. Where we asked the participants to make a uh, bid for the same food items that they did earlier. And this, they can change the food, uh, not their willingness to pay, or they can keep it the same. And it's that change in willingness to pay that we're trying to measure. Interestingly enough, we can see that there is a downward trend in price, which is the opposite of what we anticipated to begin with. We anticipate that if your friend recommends you a product, you probably be willing to pay more for it. We see that through 1,008 participants, that there is continuously a downward trend. That even if you see how much your peers are willing to pay, you are most likely not willing to pay that much as they are. And then, so this data was collected from June to October of 2019, and we can see that there are three statistically significant results. Um, for the no-label treatment, which is again, again, to see if the product was locally produced or not, um, both the frequency and the pure willingness to pay and frequency saw a statistically significant decrease in price for oysters. And then for the local label treatment, again, the pure willingness to pay and frequency was again statistically significant for oysters. Showing that oysters are a product that may be vulnerable to having um, pure willingness to pay and pure influence on price. What we do see, though, is that the rests are not statistically significant, but we did do a power analysis to show that we needed this is 1,100 participants, so we can say with certainty that we see no effect for all of the rest. So in conclusion, our study shows that in social information does not necessarily increase consumer demand, and in fact, it can actually cause a negative decrease in demand for certain products in certain situations. And then our next goal, the next step, is that we're going to analyze participant relationships within the groups. We collected this data before with a social network analysis, and we're interested to see whether the influence varies by factors such as like trust and personal relationships. Overall, we hope that our research um, that, and our study will help inform marketing strategies for food items.